Hey there folks, Rel here. Today we're going to be recommending what I feel are the most useful certifications for the Heavy Assault class in Planetside 2. This video is going to be more of a buyer's guide and less of a walkthrough, so it assumes that you already know what these certification lines and equipment do. And if you don't, then you can always check out the reviews on each individual item. That said, we're also not going to be talking about weapon selection in this video too much, except for rocket launchers, which we'll get into the reasoning for later. These starting LMGs are great tools, and you've always got a shotgun available to you if that's more suitable to your situation or playstyle. But if you are curious about a specific weapon, other YouTubers and myself have covered many of the weapons in the game so far, but you can always ask in the comments section if you're looking for some advice. So, in this chart, I've laid out each certification and rank into categories of importance. Each color points to items that are suitable to players at that stage in their character's development. It doesn't mean that you need to unlock everything, just the ones that you plan on using. Green means that it's very important or very powerful to have early on. Yellow refers to certs that are a little bit more flexible and when you can pick them up, but usually you'd want to do it after you've established a basic setup. And red points to items that are geared more toward the end of the game, or items that just don't give you the best return on investment as far as certification cost or performance. Lastly, I've also created two additional versions of this chart for various forms of colorblindness, and you can find those in the video description below. Remember that what I've laid out here is obviously my opinion, but it should give you a pretty good guideline for what you want to do with your certifications regardless of where you are in your class's development. So that's the chart, and if you want to pause the video here, do feel free, but all of the charts are in the video description for you. I'd also like to offer up an example development timeline for your first 1000 certifications invested into the class. In this example, we're going to be going with a Nanite Mesh Generator General Purpose build. The Heavy Assault is one of those classes that you can spec out in plenty of different ways to fit the situation, and this timeline isn't really going to head down any one of those paths. So be sure to keep that in mind as we run through this. For the Carve, the Orion, or the Gossaw, pretty much any weapon actually, getting your 1x reflex is probably the first thing that you should do. The class already has most of the tools available to make it successful all around, so bumping up your weapon's efficiency is a great idea, especially at such low cost. Next, we're going to drop a single point into our Nanite Mesh Generator, since it's cheap, obviously, and it will provide a fair boost to the shield's uptime. Then we're going to invest some into the Advanced Shield Capacitor Suit slot. Now ASC is great for all classes, and it's something that'll constantly be helping you out in the background, behind the scenes. Some people might wonder why we're going to go with a Nanite Mesh Generator build if we're going to be using an Advanced Shield Capacitor, instead of the Resist Shield, which is the common meta. And the reason for that is twofold. The first is that Resist Shield is difficult for a newer player to use, because you've got to use it before you start taking damage, or else it's practically useless. Nanite Mesh Generator is a much more solid option for newer players overall, and ASC is always going to be helpful. The second point is that, if you are experienced enough to make use of the Resist Shield, then the first rank is going to provide you basically all that you need until you've progressed your character some. The cert cost for additional Resist Shield ranks is pretty high, and the benefit is, comparatively, not all that great. Next, we're going to sidestep a little bit and grab a medical kit, which you may or may not have already unlocked for other classes, because these are universal unlocks. Then we'll come back to the NMG again, since it's cheap, and drop our next 30 certifications, and from here, things start to get a little bit steeper in cost, and they require more of a commitment in your time, so we're going to try to tie up some of the loose ends and fill out the build. For all of your starting LMGs, the Ford Grip is going to provide you the most noticeable improvement to your performance outside of your first reflex sight. If you're playing NC, you may also want to consider grabbing your Compensator, or you just skip the NC6 Gossaw altogether and unlock your GD22S for 100 certifications. The GD22S is an extremely controllable weapon with a 50 round magazine, and it's a great weapon all around, but it also has some traits that make it very good for newer players to learn on. The GD22S will cost you 100 certs, but a Reflex Sight will cost you another 30, and a Ford Grip will cost you another 100 after that. The Ford Grip isn't nearly as important for the GD22S as it is for the Gossaw, however, so if you wanted to hold off, that's an option that won't hurt you too much. Now we're finally going to finish out our Advanced Shield Capacitor, which I feel is extremely important. You just don't really notice the benefits of ASC early on, but you'll definitely notice them when the suit slot is maxed out. It's a great boon to your survivability on more than one level, and it's completely worth the effort. 
Next we'll be grabbing our second medical kit, and you can sit on two medical kits for a long time as a newer player. It's a pretty comfortable place between the cert cost and the effectiveness, and it's also going to help keep you from dumping resources on it when you're trying to stay alive. You really won't need more than two medical kits unless you're the type of player who knows how to medkit deny, and having less will actually help enforce some good habits in your general gameplay. We do want to grab our faction's ground to air lock on launcher because until this point your heavy assault is practically useless against enemy aircraft. Dumb fire can deal with enemy air but only when you have enough skill to land the shots, but even then it's not consistent against aircraft that aren't hovering or flying closer than they're supposed to. Outside of the ground to air lock on launcher you've basically got a burster max and that's about it as far as air deterrence goes. Heavy assaults and their rockets do not cost resources, so having access to this weapon instead of having to rely on a force multiplier is pretty important to team play. The ground to air lock on launchers are the grounder for the TR, the hawk for the NC, and the nemesis for the VS. These lock on launchers do have dumb fire capabilities, and while they don't quite have the killing potential that the standard dumb fire does, they'll still prove to be a useful item in your toolbox. Lastly, we're going to put another rank into our nanite mesh generator, and that'll bring us pretty close to the 1000 certs that this timeline is walking you through. If you wanted to finish out your NMG at this point, I'd definitely say that it's worth it, because I still use the NMG on some of my loadouts. You have more viability than a resist shield in close quarters, thanks to being able to soak burst even when somebody gets the drop on you, and you don't need to be constantly killing enemies to have a worthwhile regeneration rate like the adrenaline shield. After this, you'd probably be looking into unlocking your class-specific grenades, maybe a grenade bandolier, and your faction-specific rocket launcher. But the heavy assault class is pretty solid all around, definitely one of the most powerful classes in the game, not to mention the easiest to play, even from the ground floor. If this video has been interesting, helpful, or entertaining, please feel free to like, subscribe, tell your friends about the channel, and if you have any recommendations you can offer to newer heavy assaults, or if you find this guide useful in some capacity, please let me know in the comments section down below. Thanks very much folks, we're all signing off.